Hello everyone, Ralphie No Pants back again here with Mightalus this time on MWO Leagues 2. We are doing some adventures in Division G, the infamous G spot. We've got El Coyote Lobos de la Muerte, probably called Coyotes or Lobos going forward, against the Shadow Cat Wizard Gang. Probably calling them the Wizard Gang. Um, they came in and they locked up right early and right quick. So we're going to go straight into Frozen City Night. Yeah, it should be interesting. Thanks for having me, Ralphie. And um, yeah. always fun to cast uh, these matches between the brand new teams. Try to get them hyped to stick around. Yeah, That's my goal anyways. <laughs> so I'm right here next to Sigma. If you want to take a look at the team on the other side, I'm seeing. Sure, why don't you go first? I'm seeing some shadow cats here from Loken Dak. He's got ER Meads, ER AP Goss. Seeing the same, something similar from Shadow Cat with ATMs from Nyx. Um, the Shadow Cat uh, Wizard Gang pulling two Shadow Cats right out the deck. They've got a, the Cap Spider. A Jenner Foxtrot, that's going to be the ER Large. Yep, so they're doing the thing we I saw from them last time where they have a little bit of range on everything, it looks like. An Enforcer and a Crab B. Crab ERs and Smalls, Enforcers, Ultra Fives. And they've got a Linebacker Delta out there somewhere that I'm sure I'll find later. They're grabbing their caps right quick. What are you seeing over there, Mytilus? So over on Coyote's side, it looks like we have a kind of high DPS brawl deck with, um, they got a wolf pack, and then in addition to the wolf pack, they have two crails. And in that wolf pack, there's an Arctic wolf, probably splat, a viper, pretty standard HMG, a javelin uh, with HMG MXPL, and then a really interesting light peep MG javelin uh, and then they also have a hunchback bravo which has that's gonna be the missile one yeah it's four srm6 two medium pulse lasers so it looks like they're getting into it in the lower city soon we're setting up for that both teams yep they've got that hill in the middle of them and they're not quite ready to neither one's quite ready to commit Looks like Blue Doe and the Arctic Wolf is trying to either go around and get another cap or... Yeah, he's heading off towards Sigma, and it looks like he's pulling two Shadow Cats with him. Yeah, they saw him. So if they get distracted by him, it could be good for Coyotes. But if uh, they realize that Coyotes is down by one mech, they could just collapse on him and take the unfair fight here. Oh, Let's looks like there's something going on here. Novtis in the Viper is uh, trading with Kitsune Appreciator. Yeah, this oh. is... Uh, that might be the push. Thing. That might be the push from Coyotes. Nope. Nope. A couple of them. They're coming so they're around the corner. Direct line here, the Coyotes are. Which is interesting because I think uh, you were saying the builds on the other side are a little more uh, mid-rangey. Yeah, there, it's a lot more... There's a lot of brawl, but it looks like everything has one mid-range or one long-range weapon on it here from the Shadow Cats. So we have kind of a, I would say sort of a weird NASCAR to trade cap thing going on here. Neither team looking to make a direct confrontation. Yeah. Coyote's got those caps for a moment there, so they pulled that up, and then now it's back to two to three. So the cap pressure isn't as high, and yeah, they've just switched sides. <laughs> uh, we, uh, oh. I almost Here's expected a tunnel push, and it looks like that's that... I hope it's that spider that's over there grabbing the other cap. That's the one with the... It is not the spider. The spider is in trouble. Oh, okay. I can uh, keep an eye out on the outside mechs if you want to look at the main battle. Yeah, let's look in here. Fayhilt oh, is getting smacked by a bunch of folks in the linebacker. Oh, That's a leg. 
He's got the javelins circling him. Here we go. Coyotes are pushing now. And interestingly, wizards, they still have a mech that's capping. Giving uh, coyotes this man up fight here, or mech up fight. Yeah. It looks like that mech is coming back, but... Um, wizards just lost Shadow Cat to the DPS brawl here. Another mech goes down. Yeah, it looks like... Looks like the coyotes are starting to find those 2v1s or 2v3s. Yeah. Just starting to get that focus fire in now. Blazer's back in that spider. Oh, that must have lost a leg right there. There he goes. Kitsune Appreciator here holding out for a long time in that enforcer. Oh, looks like he's taking a nap, though. Oh, that's a death. And here yeah, is the... the crab, uh... Maybe he can pull out some legs or something before he goes. I don't know. This, you know, this uh, high DPS MG strategy in the lower divisions can be pretty powerful if the other team doesn't recognize it's coming. Because once you're in the fight, you just kind of find stuff to stare at. As long as everybody's staring at the same thing, it, it'll go down pretty quick. Yeah. And there's Ghoul going down. So let's see here. The caps are equal right now. Yeah, I don't think any trouble for Coyotes to wrap this one up, but a good effort by Wizards. Yeah. Um, they were able to kind of kite in the beginning, and um, Coyotes did give them a lot of time. Their damage was pretty spread looking at Coyotes. Yeah. You know, only one back at 50%, the rest did 70 ish or higher. 60 yeah. The Javelin, the Javelin had both its legs open. Um, okay. one of the crusaders, one of the crails had a leg open, but there was a lot of back armor pulled off of things too. And I'm not sure if that's just because that's how the brawl went or if that's just the way the world works here. I'm going to get out of that. Yeah. I wonder if in the beginning, uh, because they were a little bit cagey, coyotes sort of gave Wizards maybe the impression that they were going to play a little slower game. And so Wizards was content to send that Jenner off to get the back cap. Um, it'd be interesting to hear from Coyotes, too, if they were conscious of forcing a push when they realized one of uh, the Wizards mechs was off capping, or if they just decided they, they saw a juicy target and wanted to go for it. Just making sure they're ready to swap the sides. Shadow cats are saying they're ready. Wizards are saying they're ready. I thought I, man, I just said I was going to call them wizards, and there I didn't do it. I mean, like, every shadow cat is a wizard in a way, right? Yep. All right, and they are ready to swap. And then here you go. I don't know if you've got anything you want to talk about in the maps, but I'll get you set so you can do that if you'd like while I swap them around. Uh. Because yeah, this, this map's got a couple little weird things you can do, but um, yeah. And here's the map room link in case I forgot to get that to you. Here comes the swap. Okay, I will pop open that link and have a look. I got confused because they don't all have the same unit tag. I know it's not required, but oh boy, does that confuse me when they don't. <laughs> uh, in our unit, we get comments on that all the time. Every lobby, everybody's like, why do you have nobody with the same tag? And it's because we, I don't know, we respect player autonomy, I guess. Um, so... This map does have some quirks, and we have seen all kinds of strategies from many different types of teams. Uh, I would suspect at a lower division team, probably maybe we see brawl versus brawl, and whoever takes the first and decisive step over the dropship is probably going to fight in this open area, or maybe here, or sometimes it's very common for team two to bash push lower city because it's... Um, you know, it feels familiar for from quick play. 
Sometimes you might see lower div team try to do a tunnel thing while they distract. Um, another kind of more getting up into the lower divisions of mid, the middle divisions. Maybe you'll see some receive mechs from team two set up on this ridge. Um, on the other side, we saw KDCM versus uh, Fjord. KDCM set up a receive all the way back here. It was pretty crazy, like on the edge of the map, and then one Nova Cat on top of this building. And then I think they had a Jenner Fury over here. So uh, it worked out for them. Um, it felt a little tenuous, but definitely worked out. So that was pretty wild and kind of unexpected, I think, from the Team 1 side. A more conventional receive might just be on this default hill by Bravo yeah. spawn. Yeah, or... Or you can also see it, you know, up here in the city yeah. on this line, making sure, yeah, you know, I get guess... somebody up here to make sure that they can check and have that seismic on in case anybody's coming through the tunnel. Yeah, that's a good point. I forgot about seismic. Um, it can be very useful depending on the map, especially like HPG, for example, it can be very useful. Um, one note about Theta for new teams is you do kind of have to decide early if you want to involve Theta. Like you kind of have to have a mech that can go get it and come back real fast because otherwise if the other team knows what's up, they'll be like, oh, they're taking Theta? We should just like kill them. <laughs> and they'll have a mech late to the fight. But if you send something real fast and jumpy over here, it can be a good opportunity to Add some cap pressure. I don't think it really gives you map control. You sort of have to have max with offensive capability around here in order to really control Theta. But that added cap pressure can be nice. Yeah. Um, lots of times you'll see a team send something with a fair amount of jump jets, speed and jump jets down there so it can grab it and then get back up to the party with everyone else. Uh, yeah, yeah. So it'll be interesting to see what they, the teams, we, I think we have generally seen Wizards play a lot less full send brawl and Coyotes play a lot more full send brawl. And it's interesting because I think Coyotes has been getting a little bit of, uh, peer advice from Oxy and Oxy is very much a full send style of team. So, yep. All I right. would be interested to see from Wizards how they will develop over time because they do have as their team leader a fairly experienced uh, Rainbow Six Siege coach. So maybe once his um, game knowledge has developed a little more, um, we may see more deck changes and strategy changes from Get Lucky Ghoul. Yeah. Yeah, we... My team this season is a div up and we scrimmed the wizards once um uh -huh. we tried to do it twice but you know schedules um you know talk about you know focusing and getting ready and oh no something's happened uh oh we got a dc from get lucky ghoul Okay, his internet, his internet blipped. blipped. That's that's terrifying. <laughs> yeah. PGI is sending a star of piranhas to get him. Here we go. The two teams are locked. So we're seeing from team one, we're seeing Bravo and Charlie which is that wide split up top with the low trench and the easy tunnel access. Team two is going Bravo Charlie. That's not the tunnel side. All right, here we go. I'm going to give them another drop. We'll see how it goes. This time, both teams are North American, so we're staying on the North American server for all of the drops on last one where we were alternating. A 
And I am once again over here by Sigma, taking a look and seeing what we can see. Okay, I am still loading in. So I, you go first. I've got here an Incubus, Heavy Machine Gun, Small Pulse, Summoner B, Ultra 10s, Hunchback, 2C Bravo, once again, Medium Pulse Lasers, SRM6s, the Javelins with the Heavy Machine Guns and the Small Pulse Lasers. And that's one group, and the other one is another Summoner B, a Viper with the Heavy Machine Guns and the Micros, Blue Doe doing a dance here in his summoner. He's got the ultras and the in there. Okay. And yeah. So I'm on uh, team one side, Wizards. Uh, we got a Spider 5K, which I assume is going to be Dinner Brawl. I can't click on him. We have a Charger 1A1, 6 ER. A 1ER large laser, 6 small lasers, a Wolfhound 1B with medium pulse, an Enforcer 5P with 2 Ultra AC5, Cap Spider, don't know what it has, probably not going to be able to click on it, that crab we saw before, 2ER uh, large, 2 small X pulse, uh, okay. a Shadow Cat uh, with a whole salad build, uh, 4 ER medium, 1 ER large, 1 SRM6, 2 AP boss. Yeah. Oh, get lucky ghoul getting focused by a few mechs as he pokes around, but swift killer. Oh, ooh, that lent. They are yeah, trying to get that to charger you. down. They are trying to get, get lucky ghoul is down. Shadow cats, the wizard gang getting up there quick. Let's see if they can keep that focus and find their next target. Looks like they're having yeah, some questions. The, uh, the summoner has orange CT, so they're and it and now red red CT armor. Sorry, so they had some decent focus fire on it, but they think they're kind of the wizards are kind of struggling here with this brawl DPS. Their mixed builds are kind of a liability in this in this context here, and they do have one mech still capping while this fight is going on. Um, so. Kind of outgunned in terms of mechs and builds. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, it can be a thing to try to brawl it out, pull the legs, and win on caps, but usually you'll see that in the heavier drops, not these lighter ones. Coyote is just yeah. hunting down Fay Hilt. Fay Hilt? Fay Hilt. There we go. Yeah, Words. And My in mouth. Fairness, the mech that is capping is the cap spider, so. Yeah, it's that, not like it's not performing in its role. It's just, it seems like uh, maybe sh wizards didn't spot the the setup from. Uh, there was a viper, not viz, I think, that was just like sitting on top of one of the buildings, laying into the wizard gang unnoticed. Yeah. Um, so hopefully, in these uh, next next coming drops, we'll see uh, some more variety in how things unfold and. We'll see, uh, maybe, you know, every team's got some style, even if it's not an intentional style. Yeah. And uh, how things go depends on the maps and we can see, and the tonnages, and we can see, like you were saying, some strategies will work in certain tonnages and maps, and others, uh, if you change the map, it may not be so good anymore. Yeah. I mean, Shadowcats, they did, you know, the, they are ahead by two points. If that, if that brawl could have taken longer, you know, the cap spider could do it. Yeah. And, yeah, you know, they dragged out the brawl that may have been paused. But again, we probably but, would want to see that on a much bigger map. Yeah, on a much bigger map and uh, with much higher tonnage, where if you're the last one, you know, you're not getting chased by other lights or pseudo lights like this Viper here. Yeah, and he's. Yeah. Oh, he avoided the sandwich between the uh, Viper and the Incubus. I have to say though, for for being basically out decked, wizards did put kind of respectable damage on on some of these mechs. Like their focus fire was was decent for a new team. The summoners open CT uh, kind of spread a little bit on the side torsos, but not much on the legs. The hunchback is red CT armor, open side torso. Other summoners kind of fresh, but I mean he was. Not really he was further focus. back, yeah. He wasn't the focus target. There we go. The Javelin is kind of, uh, yeah, a little more spread damage on the Javelin. The Incubus, also the same. Well, they had they had some decent focus on this Incubus legs. 
Yeah. So all in all, you know, if you're a new team leader, um, I wouldn't be super concerned with drop wins. Of course, they feel good, and it's nice to have confirmation of what you practice. But uh, as long as you feel like your team is improving in some of the areas that you've identified, then it's probably you're probably yeah. on the right track. Yeah, that's because what is it? This is year two for my team, and is it the same for yours? I think pretty close. Uh, sorry, what do you? Uh, year two for your team in the comp here. Oh, in this in battle for midway, how many we won or lost? No, second year playing comp. Second year. Oh, uh, uh huh. Yes, this would be our second year playing comp on a more serious level. Yeah. Yeah. Lots of lots of double damage holds. Um, otherwise, a pretty good damage spread from the coyotes, like we expected. They're just taking a peek at the stats. And now we're moving to a really classic map, the good old Forest Colony Snow. Like I remember playing this when this was like one of the maps and there were no other maps. Um, There's a couple of things you can do there, and then change the map there. All right, so we'll see here because with this map, you know, as you take a look. There's a few more things you can do. You can try and do long range out from, you can do, try to do long range out from the water. You could try to do a sneak around. Um, team one probably has easier access to the secret tunnel in some ways in that they can get there through cover if they'd want to. Whereas team two, if they want to get out really past If they want to get out past that brown line, they've got to be exposed at least a little bit from a few directions. Let's see here. Tonnage is going up. Folks are slowly getting ready. It'll be interesting to see here. Now on, on this one, we've been seeing the Shadow Cats do that. We've been seeing the wizards do that mixed sort of mech building. And that is letting them, you know, that could be an advantage here depending on where, um, you know, where they go. Because if if they're up on the land and they're seeing things in the water or even the other way around, you know, that that land water oh. divide here, that could be that could be pretty crucial to see what you're gonna do. Team two is in a much stronger receive position, I think, on this map. Um, yeah, there's some kind of strange idiosyncrasies. The first one being that uh, the LOD on some of the cover like flips in and out. Um, so that can be something tricky if you're planning a long range deck. I think the, all the old vets like already know it's like old hat for them, but we didn't. We weren't aware that basically somebody on team two could just see one of our traders standing behind a rock. <laughs> Oh, um, so so there's some kind of quirkiness with that. There's some kind of quirkiness with the the way the fog works and the trees. Uh, in general, I think 
long range is doable from either side. I don't have enough experience with this map to confidently say like what I would do, but my sort of feeling is if you're going to play team two side long range, maybe it's going to be slightly more difficult for your inland mechs to make a move on Kappa, but I could be wrong there. Yeah. Um, it's yeah. a funny map. Uh, I think at lower divs, we'll probably see mostly push just because long range in general is, is sort of demanding to logistically. All right. We'll pull into the lobby here. And we're seeing Team 1. The Wizards are already locking in. They're going on the Bravo Charlie side of the map, which, not terribly indicative, makes me think they're probably going to try to head up the land, you know, up the land bridge, the Epsilon Sigma, maybe through to Kappa. We'll have to see what they actually do. Yeah. Yeah, it should be. I'm I'm kind of interested to see this one because it's a it's a small map that feels big, right? Yeah. So, and in some respects, uh, the previous map is also sort of. Well, maybe it's a big map. I think to lower div teams, the previous map is a big map that feels small, and to lower div teams, this is a small map that feels big. Uh, so I think higher div teams will have a much different opinion, knowing like all the kind of default routes that you would use for different types of decks. Yeah. Um, so it'll be interesting to see and try to infer kind of what's going on through the minds of both of these teams as they do their opening rollouts and what their decks are. Yeah, and it's the like they're both yeah, and the other thing to consider is that. Um, you know, both of these maps were really built for, you know, play around this size because these maps were introduced, you know, when the game was still 8v8. And we're playing 7-7 seven, seven now. Some of the older maps are definitely smaller because they are from an era where, where the default was 8v8. Mm-hmm. And so the newer maps have generally trended bigger. Yeah. And I'm over here at Epsilon. Let okay. me see who I Go can ahead. get a look at. I've got a Black Knight. Well, I've got a few things. Let's take a look here. We've got the Black Knight, two large, seven medium, the Osiris, large pulse, ER small. Get some angles here. There we go. Mad Cat 2, 2, 5 ER large. Uh, Mad Cat 2, 2. Mad Cat 2, C2. Mad Cat 2, 2. Oofta. They're, they're pushing a number on me. This one's got two Hag 30s. Hunchback 4P with the 7 medium X pulse. Piranha. Phoenix Hawk with large lasers, medium lasers. Did they just bring one of every kind of Marauder? No, they missed one. But lots of Marauders over here from the Wizards. So over on um, Coyotes, we have a Niger JK with five Ultra 2s, one AC5. A Stalker, uh -huh. Stalker 5S, two ER large, four ER medium, two SRM6, two SRM4. Um, that'll be interesting to see if they can put it in the right position. Uh, Viper with a heavy machine gun. Uh, I'm laughing at the stalker for reasons I will explain. Okay. Uh, Blood Kit, all, uh, Arctic Wolf uh, with two Hag 20s. Some really interesting builds on Coyote sides. This is something I'm interested to see how this plays out. Um, a six medium pulse, eight small laser Crusader 6T, Summoner B with two Ultra 10s. Um, and I think I missed a light mech somewhere. But it looks like uh, Wizards setting up for long range receive. Yeah, long Maybe. range receive, long range trade. Looks like two lights are starting to come around past the ship, trying to scout oh, out. I, the Coyotes mech I missed was another Jade Kite with two, five Ultra 2s and two ER large. That is a 
fairly interesting build. So the stalker, I am not laughing at you, Coyotes, don't worry. Uh, we brought a similar stalker in a previous match, and the caster was like, ooh, and some stalkers. We thought, uh, looks like one of everything. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm personally hyped to see if they can use this bracket stalker. Uh, it's, it's a really funky mech, but if you put it in the right place, um, it can cause a lot of pain. So it looks like... Looks like the coyotes are collapsing in on Kappa while the wizards are slowly filtering into the secret tunnel. They've either got to go through it and do it, or they're getting... Or Uzi's leading that charge in his Crusader, and they're going to get collapsed on. Yeah, I don't think. Okay, well they got to know what's up now. They've seen, they've seen two bigs. Yep. Looks like some of them are turning around. Wizards has to kind of commit to holding this entry, or just doing the loop de loop. And yeah. this Phoenix Hawk needs to be careful not to get caught out, left behind. Yep, he's but, fighting that Arctic Wolf right now. He's got the yeah, large it's lasers. It's well, landing his shots too, which you wouldn't expect from a hag build onto another small fast mech. Looks like this Phoenix Hawk may get sold out here um, if Coyotes realizes. Can he slip away into the tunnel? Maybe, see geometry willing. He's able to slip away in the tunnel. We got another fight in the backside going between this Viper and an Osiris. And the uh, Osiris has a little bit of support We'll see. Coyotes has like, you know, three caps up, I think. Four, Four caps, caps up, up. yeah. Yeah, so now the now cap pressure is going to be heavy. But it looks like Ghoul and that Osiris is going to get one of them back. Or yeah. is going to try at least to to get them a cap. And, and even though Coyotes has cap control, they don't really have map control. They, you know, they've kind of abandoned Theta in the water. Um, yeah. They are able to deny Kappa, so that's good. But uh, let me see. Just correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, Epsilon is uncapped and the remainder are capped by coyotes. That is correct, yes. Okay, sometimes my UI is bugged when I load in late. Yeah, yeah. So, no. yeah, it's wizards to make a move here. They got maybe like another 30 seconds, maybe a minute if they're decisive. Yeah. Not rolling out fast. So, that but group that went into the tunnel is coming back out. And it looks like they're trying to catch the side here of the coyotes, trying to catch that stalker and everything yeah. else. And we'll see if we'll see if this flanking attempt they can if they can pull it off it's, here. Two assaults on wizards might be able to hold hold the line long enough for these mechs at the tunnel, but the tunnel mechs really gotta pour out of there into the backs of coyotes and take advantage yeah, of this divided attention. Otherwise they're just gonna sell their sell their Bigs for free here. Yeah. Looks like the Marauder 2 is, is about to get sold. Yep, there's the Marauder 2C, and soon here's going to be the Marauder 2. Let's see if he'll and, at least uh, pull we something. We're still seeing fairly static positioning from Wizards here, not not seeing as much aggression as you'd like to see while, while their assault is kind of hanging out to dry there. Um, yeah. But there's still damage out on Coyotes. Now, now the pressure is really on to get some kills, even this up. Let's see if they can find some weak coyotes to pick off, or yeah. if the coyotes are going to turn around and just kind of collapse on this. It looks like position. it looks like Ghoul and his um, Osiris might be trying to escape and get some sort of handle on the caps, but that's just not working oh. for him. Just picks up a kill on the Crusader, that's, the Coyotes Crusader. Yep, they got and Uzi Man took down the team captain. So the summoner is one touch, one right leg, but Wizards 2 has two mechs that are very badly hurt at the tunnel entrance. Yep, there and goes they, Blue Doe. Arctic Wolf is making good use of its high mounts here, peeking these two bigs. Uh, I think it killed... Oh, that Osiris you mentioned won the fight on the backside. He's actually coming back into the backs of... Kind of this could actually turn it. This, yeah, this Osiris, if he's, if he's smart, if he's lucky, yeah, yeah. If, he, if he can keep moving. I think he shut down for a second there, though. I'm not sure what happened. He's got both legs open, though. Kind of a... Oof. Yeah. yeah. That one was much, much closer and much more, I think, what the wizards were trying to see. 
I think they were trying yeah. a couple of mobility strats, trying to get around and do some flanks. And with yeah, a little wizards, more aggression, I think those could have gone. Yeah, wizards had a good, good opportunity. I'm not sure how cognizant they were of it, but uh, just a little more decisiveness and, like you said, aggression when they had them sandwiched. Um, it, even though it may not have felt like a sandwich to them, they had, you know, two assaults on one end that got all the attention of coyotes and as soon as those coyotes turned around all the other mechs in the tunnel got to be pouring out and capitalizing on selling out your assaults there yeah and at the same time you know we're seeing these i've seen these teams a little bit you know as we're going through this here and you know they're the way things are going i my team's probably going to get relegated back down to this division, and these guys are starting to look a little bit scary. Yeah, we had, um, you know, reasonable damage numbers on both sides. Uh, farm, Coyotes farmed a lot of damage uh, in general, and Wizards had uh, some mechs that were no slouch, too. Yep, and they are ready for their swap, so let's do it here. There we go. So we've got the sides swapped. Now the teams are going to play the other side of the same map. So we'll see if they reverse each other's strategies, decide they've learned anything from each other, or, you know, just stick to what they were trying to do from the other side. Yeah, I didn't catch uh, as many builds on the wizard side. It would be interesting to see when I look back at the, the VOD. Um, it'd be interesting to see if they had more kind of role specialized builds and less kind of uh, weapon salad. Uh, and maybe if that gave them a little better edge in that last drop, yeah. even if they couldn't pull out the win. Yeah, I think I think that solidifying on one group of weapons or the other will really help them out a lot. Um, and from what I've seen there, they had some folks there that could do the range, and some folks yeah. that could do the could do the brawling. And maybe maybe you do an anchor and a wolf pack, or you do. Um, or, you know, you work on getting everybody together to do the same thing, but, you know, it's one of those where you gotta, at, at some point you just sort of have to decide to do a thing, at least in my opinion. I'm, I've never been great at really mixed mechs, um, you know, I but. think, um, mixed mechs can can play a role when you when you have some familiarity with your opponent and you have some familiarity with how a map plays out and you're kind of thinking, you know, it would be nice to have a mech that has long range capability, but also some short range punch. And if we think about it, there are some very classic choices for that, like the executioner. Yep. and also the crusader and you see those get picked but i don't know if they're consciously picked in the lower divisions for their bracket capability uh yeah. some bracket mechs you might see in the higher divs would be something like a veagle with erppcs and srms or uh, i saw some summoners with two er large and srms they had a very specific job on terra therma which was to did not be able to deny caps but also hold a very powerful choke point with their SRMs at the same time. So those kinds of things though I would say it's, I would caution new teams or even for my team like we we don't really try to do bracket stuff very often because our you know our cohesion and our coordination our ability to execute very complex things like this is not 
I mean, to higher div teams, it won't seem complex. But you know, we like to the lower div teams. We, we're we're still trying to kind of get master the fundamentals, uh, good communication, focus fire, uh, reading the enemy deck types, reading who has map control, who doesn't have map control. Yeah. Um, it's harder to use those bracket builds. Yeah. For those so of us who I'm just got sure here. Yeah. Go ahead. For those of us who just got here a little bit ago, you know, those bracket builds are harder. And I I get the idea of being able to have some poke and some brawl in all the mechs. Like, I understand the idea. I think the concept seems good. It's just the way the way like in a in a real life versus a video game sort of scenario so i'm over here at epsilon and i'll take a look and see what mechs we get over here sounds good marauder 2c mad cat mark 2 ultra 5s ultra 10s incubus heavy machine guns small pulse uh arctic wolf with the two hags again Splat Cat, Splat Cat, Night Gear D, 3 AC 10 ZRPPC, that's a classic. And then there's the Stalker FB over here, and let's see which one that is. Is that the 6 ER Large Laser? It's not usually the one you put all that on there, but we'll see what happens. Hold. The way. They call the hold. Yep. Saw the hold uh, called confirmation of a hold <laughs> well now we did uh, uh, I will pull up the rules just in case they have questions about yeah they can redrop if they want um... if they want us to read out the rules to their type out the rules so then I, I can type it out but the I don't believe there is a Nope, the rule about having a cap is from a different tournament. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay, so they're going to kill each other and... Okay, they've got one cap. Okay, so it'll be fine. Yeah. All right, that's neat. Glad, glad this got sorted out. Yeah, be sure the DC dies. That's that's the main thing. We don't want to be here waiting for the DC. Who is the DC? Uh, I didn't catch it. Let me see if I can... No, my usual buttons for scrolling through the chat did not work. Oh, that was that was nice. They figured that out what they wanted to do right quick. Yeah, so I think uh, this is probably acceptable in a technical. If we want to get technical, we don't. We're not. We're in, we're in the G spot. We're in Division G. Just just so the teams know in the future, the rules are written in a certain way to avoid having a team use the redrop function in order to see the enemy max. So that's why that's why it's written so that the team that calls for a redrop has to kill themselves first and then disconnect from the lobby once they're dead. And then only after that happens, the other team will cap a point and does the same thing. And then in theory, the team that calls for a redrop does not see the enemy mechs and so does not gain an advantage by calling for a redrop. Yeah. That's just an explanation of it's not a ruling on this drop. Yeah. Yeah, no, I don't think any, but oh, forgot to pay his Comstar bills. Ah, that's that'll be a problem. Team one locked up right away, right again. Team two going to be locked right up away. Just tell them all to check their Comstar accounts one more time. And, uh, here we go. Uh, 
this is uh, Bob from Comstar here. I'm trying to reach you about your Mech's extended warranty. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that one didn't land. No, it, it, it it's just that I at one point was uh, playing a wee bit of Beer Warrior and uh, made some jokes about extended warranties. And uh, <laughs> PGI wasn't terribly happy with me. <laughs> but yeah, I took a look at them over there. So let me see if I can get you all a view over here from this side on these mechs. Jenner with the large and the mediums. Yeah, large. That's there. We go. Are you talking about the gamma side? Because I can do the gamma side if you like. It looks like it's the same mechs again. Yeah, it is. It is the same mechs as last time. Yeah, I just didn't get a chance to take a peek at the get the get the loadouts from the Shadow Cats on the on the stream last time. I know you called them out, but I didn't get a chance to you know get the little pictures. Oh, okay, yeah, we got um, Laser Bomb Black Knight, uh, Mad Cat two uh, two Hag thirties and SRMs, uh, Mad Five M with two medium pulse, two snubs, and one silver bullet Goss rifle. So another kind of rackety. Uh, actually, the Goss snub could be interesting. Hellbringer with uh, two ER peeps, three ER mediums, uh, two heavy machine guns, so another kind of brackety build. Get Lucky Gould, team leader in the favorite Jenner, one ER large, three ER mediums. Uh, oh, Phoenix Hawk, Hawk with uh, two ER large, one SRM6, one ER medium laser. So again, more sort of... I think there's a difference, a qualitative difference between a bracket build and a salad build too. Yeah. Let's put it that way. It looks like it looks like the uh the wizards are contemplating the joys of the tunnel of love. Yeah. Uh, uh maybe uh take a moment to ponder their orbs. Oh, I missed out on a uh uh Ivan Jag who has one Ultra Ten, two ER mediums, two SRM six, and a heavy large laser. Okay, so it looks like they have rejected the tunnel, maybe seen the Kappa push from Wizards, or sorry, from Coyotes. Yep. Get Lucky Ghoul out here trying to trade in that Jenner from out at the edge of the water. Yeah, percentage was actually, if you... Like, he wasn't doing too bad, but that's... that's yeah, still... okay, so he's, he's taken quite a bit of damage for being a light mech. Yeah. Yeah. One of his legs is red orange armor, which is not what you want to see in the first few minutes of the match. And Coyotes has been <coughs> able to creep up with their short range kind of for free here. You can see these catapults get into the action. Yep. Ghoul they... giving up the radio tower. Oh, and here comes the brawl in that little in that little rat's nest over here in Tangletown. Yeah, we've got uh this mad cat on wizards taking a lot of heat from these catapults. Um they did, Wizards did put out a lot of damage on the side torso of Coyote's Mad Cat, but lost their own Mad Cat. In the process and there. Jag is now red. Uh, cherry red, right leg, missing its left leg. It is peeking in the correct direction uh, for missing the, oh. Okay, so this stalker in the back from Coyote is doing some work, pure ER large. Um, Catapult from Uzi, their team leader, looking to dive into the fight here. He's Look. staggering his alpha, though. Don't know if he knows there is a HSL quirk on that catapult. Well, he's still he's been at it so long, he might be at the point where he still needs to. Yeah, and and here's the flank coming up there. Coyote's got two up on the radio tower. Ghoul trying to challenge that, but they're they're just shooting down now. Yeah, they liked this catapult on Coyote's side, but it is still dangerous. You know, it's fairly healthy, uh, has a respectable amount of range in this context, still able to reach some of the mechs like this Hellbringer. Um, Uzi is also in his catapult closing in. I think uh, Coyote's kind of smells blood here, looking to finish it off. Yeah. Uh, this Hellbringer just got lagged. 
They're doing a much better job this time of not letting the calves get out of control, at least. And I don't know if part of that's just because of how the sides spawned or the choices they made, but they're doing a much better job of that, too. You know, there was yeah, never... You saw wizards contemplate the tunnel, and in that time, uh, Coyotes was able to gain a lot of distance for free. Yeah. Um, and in that respect, also, intentionally or not, some map control. Um, I Something I've seen from Coyotes so far in this match is they have been able to extend their strengths from the light drops into these medium weight drops and that's a very interesting thing to me a development uh, shows that they are recognizing their strengths and trying to kind of stretch them into a different context so we'll see if we can uh, find some find some growth to observe from the wizards here in this next drop they started off the tourney quite strong relative to all the other brand new teams the other two brand new teams yeah get the get the stats up there quick while we go through so you can take a look there nobody in double digits this time um, no blue doe somehow doing 44 team damage taking the team damage crown so far um Yeah. All right. So let's take a look here and head into the lobby as we do the map bands. All right. Overall, I just hope that this has been an enjoyable tournament for all three new teams. I know um, it can be kind of overwhelming logistically. So hopefully they are getting... Getting, getting their fun value out of, of the work. Yeah. Because let's see here. So who bans first? Yep, it's going to be the wizards banning first. Uh, no HPV. Ooh. I think that's a smart call for a newer team. Avoid the urge to congregate in the basement. Maybe feel like you have a little more options on the other maps because they're, uh, they maybe feel a little more open even if, uh, even if there are kind of distinct, distinct lines on it. All right. It's like they're gonna canyon. Yep, so we are playing Canyon. I will be interested to see if Uzi and his Coyotes will change up their play style a little. We saw them mix in some longer range stuff to good effect on that last drop. They had that Stalker in the back that was kind of pinning the flank of uh, Wizards. And... Um, you know, maybe we will see something different from Wizards, too. Maybe we'll see a little higher DPS push deck. Um, I mean, I want to see Thunderbolts. Uh, Thunderbolt missiles, you mean? Yeah, I want to see Thunderbolts. So Ghoul wants to be Team 2, so the sides stay the same. Yeah, this is interesting. I wonder... I wonder if they feel like it's the easier side to push from or if they feel like it's the easier side to receive from. I think intuitively for most new teams, they would probably pick team one to receive, but. Yeah. I mean, looking at this, my first thought is both teams are probably going to try to get either Epsilon or Theta, and then see what they can do from there. Um, that's just my general feeling on how this seems to go. Um, yeah, I think that's a pretty natural uh, instinct for, for newer teams and even, you know, more experienced teams. Yeah, that Kappa side is very narrow, especially for, I think it's Team 1. And so you don't really want to be making that 
I don't think you want to be making that push in there if you can avoid it. Yeah, Kappa, Kappa side on Canyon is a very kind of dicey proposition. I've seen one higher div match I can remember. I'm sure there's more where there was a team that tried to push on that side from team one side and it seemed to work okay at first and then they kind of stalled out. It didn't work okay in the end. Yeah, because they're, I just fit, it's got, I think it's something with the ramps. But yeah, any... the Epsilon side ridge, um, you have that wide open area and then you also have the continuity of the terrain behind the good ridge cover, whereas on Kappa side, you you can't just run straight across one ridge. And even if you do, you have more kind of canyons and pockets where light mechs can hide and ambush you. Yeah. But here we go. <clears throat> Going into the last match of this fight here. So I'm at Sigma here, taking a look at the mechs. I've got Hunchback 4P, the seven medium X pulses, the Mad Cat 2 2 with the SRMs and the Hag 30s, Kodiak with the four AC 10s and an ERPPC, Marauder 5M, Snubs, Silver Bullet Goss, two medium pulse. And then, oh, I should push that button. Somebody told me about that in the last game. Thank you. I appreciate that. Lucky over here in his Jenner. With the large and mediums next to the Hellbringer. PPCs and medium lasers. Executioner. C. Ultra 20 Plasma Cannons SRMs. So I'm going to say they look a little more brawly over here than they have in some of the past ones. Yeah, a little more DPS, it sounds like, over on Wizards. On Coyote's side, we have a Splat Jenner, we have a Mag Shot Snub Spider, we have a Daka Mad Cat, a standard build, a Coloss Brawl, uh, Charger 1A1 with small lasers and an AMS, a Stalker 5S with uh, six ER large and four rocket launchers. I believe the rocket launchers are there for the durability perk on the missile doors, and then a Mad 2C Delta with two ER large and two HAG 30s. So, it, uh, you know, a little more range from Coyotes than we've been seeing, but also um, a fair amount of DPS. It looks yeah. like they're probably going to send a Brawl Pack in with some range overwatch from the Stalker <laughs> and the Mad Cat 2, or sorry, not the Marauder 2C. Yeah. Looks like the Wizards are trying to get. Theta and they took Epsilon. Yeah. The uh, the strange Kappa push here, two lights. Yeah, I wonder if they thought they might be able to pick a light that goes for Kappa or just felt insecure about sending a solitary light to Kappa. Um, Wizards grouped up over Theta here, laying into Uzi's charger. Uh, we got a good 10% yeah. off that. Looks like now they're letting into the Mad Marauder 2C, which is uh, kind of hurting on the arm here. It's like we kind of got a good old quick play thing yeah. going on here. Get lucky, Ghoul sniping off from the side, and the Jenner getting some good large laser shots in there, from what I can see. Yeah, uh, let's see what is. Is he only got one large laser on that, though? It's because just one so... large, yeah. It's not quite enough. Um, Shadowcat uh, Wizard like Gang, two, that three. Hellbringer Nyx already, already at 80%. Let's see what's happened to him. Oh, he's got an open side torso. Yeah. Over on the uh, Coyote side, they did, Wizards was able to bring that Charger Uzi down to orange. Okay, so they just picked a Mad Cat yep. on Wizards' side. Coyotes did. Uh, you know, we'd like probably like to see this Jenner get more active into the backs. And this Stalker from um, Coyotes, again, is just sort of sitting in the back, happy to be there, um, laying into stuff that it sees. Yep. Wizards he has been putting out more damage, I think, 
or faster in this match than they have in any of the other drops, which is good. And this Coloss is now down to 43%, lost a side torso. Still has, you know, a decent amount of gun, though. Got to respect it. Yeah. Um, the Magicat is trading out for the Coloss. And they were able to pick that Hellbringer. There we go. They got the... Yeah. And this Splat Jenner is really doing a great job of... I, I think I missed it. Maybe the Splat Jenner killed, picked the Kodiak or something. Could have done. Um, I yeah. think we have this set of eight Executioner, uh, which performed very well in an earlier match for Wizards. But this aggression from, um, from Coyotes, they just kind of rolled over Theta here. Once they started getting picks, it seems like they got a little more confident. Yeah. Our... Looking to close this out. Um, yeah, once the snowball started, it looked pretty rough. Yeah, Gould yeah. was getting some damage in across there, but he, you know he's got the one large, and it's an ER large and three ER mediums. Right. So he's gonna he, be he's gonna be a spicy boy in that Jenner, under the best of circumstances. Yeah, and I, I have to say I do. Um, I do, <laughs> this spider is doing work, man. This isn't that nasty. It's not the fastest build in the world, but once it gets into range, um, you really don't want to be another light mac dueling with it. No, that's that's uh, that's terrifying, actually. It'll it'll pop your leg in two shots usually, something like that. Yeah. So let's pull the fancy stats here. A lot of damage on both teams, more so obviously on Coyotes, which you would expect from a win. Uh, but still respectable numbers from Wizards. Uh, Kodiak yeah. pulling out top damage for Wizards at 536. Uh, top damage on Coyotes was that Marauder 2C 681. Alec coming in with the 33 team damage. Oh. Trying to challenge Blue Doe for it, but just couldn't get it. Blue Doe reigns supreme. It is 44. So somebody somebody ate the very backside of that Marauder 2C. A good strike from that. And then that brings us to the end for this one. Yep. This is where we... Like, just chill for five minutes, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Uh, thanks for everyone who is joining us or who will be reviewing this VOD in the future. Uh, to the new teams that were casted, I hope our commentary was fair and balanced and useful. If it's not, I am definitely open to feedback. Yeah, yeah. Um, we'll take criticism as well from the folks in the audience. Um, yeah, but yeah, it. I will agree. Uh, these teams do great work naming. Um, they all did. And let's see here. Yeah, uh, it looks like it was a pretty nice and friendly and some uh, sweaty maps. <laughs> yeah, I, I really... Um... I think it'll be really interesting for both teams to go back and watch their first VOD versus this one. Um, yeah, yeah. I think they'll both see like a lot of <clears throat> a lot of real growth and development. Yeah, it it it'll always kind of feel. I mean, well, maybe not always, but in our experience, it sort of feels like you're just kind of grinding away and not really getting anywhere, and then you play a match and you're suddenly like, oh, yeah, we did learn things. So yeah. it's not a it's not a it's not a linear progression. You will have times where you hang out on a plateau for a little bit. I mean, it's good to get some help. Like I know our team is looking forward to getting some mentoring from some higher div players soon. Yeah, uh, we kind of shied away from it in the beginning because we just wanted to make sure that we had our logistics in order. So we didn't want to ask a coach to show up and then have trouble with other players. Our our players showing up, for example. Yeah. Yeah, no, and that's important, you know. 
getting your stuff ready and put together always good um yeah but i think you know both teams can be pretty proud of the progress they've put in and the work they've done um oh yeah for sure you know um you know building a team having cohesion and running through and you know and if nothing else you know have fun enjoy it do the silly stuff um yeah doing a quick check on how this division was before this match started so oxy and the red coats were winning with 41 and shadow cats were at 27 Coyotes at 19, so the Coyotes just picked up 15 points. So I think they just pulled slightly ahead, if I'm remembering how all the scoring works, with a win being one point or three points, a tie being two, and a loss one. But um, yeah, pretty much a lot of these divisions have been close. It's been good to see, and these teams still have. One more uh, weekend. The Coyotes will take on the Dirty Socks, and the Shadow Cats will take on the Junkyard Dogs. Um, I hope I get a chance to stop and uh, take a look and see what's going on. Maybe cast a yeah, match or two, but it's going to be a busy weekend. Round five will also be between the currently leading OxyClean and European Redcoats. So that'll be an interesting match to watch. And uh, yeah, I I do agree that you what, what you're saying about how both teams have a lot to be a lot to be proud of. I feel like also just for new teams, getting people to be able to show up for all your matches and getting be able to run practice and there's a lot of like logistical stuff that I I think is a, is definitely a good accomplishment for any new team, regardless of your performance on the battlefield. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, with that, I think that's going to be the end of our uh, G-Spot action for this evening. I've got to play my match in about two and a half hours. Um, so some of you might see me getting blown up. But other than that, uh, I've been Ralphie, and this has been Midalus. And uh, thank you all for watching. Yeah, thanks for having me. Have a good one.